Okay, ladies and gentlemen. Um, to be honest, that was for me the talk when uh, it was um, submitted to the conference system. The talk I was most keen on watching it because it, it <laughs> because it is a topic um, it annoys me since decades now and it is that calendars actually suck. And now you promised you will come up with a proposal to make them at least less suck. Suck less, yeah. Mm. Suck less, um, or maybe even uh, fun. So this is Moritz <laughs> and Fabi uh, telling us the proposal about how to solve the calendar mess over Matrix. Give them a round applause. Thank you. <laughs> Stage is yours. Thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah. Hi everyone, um, we have a little talk prepared about doing calendars over uh, Matrix. And first of all, uh, who are we? My name is Moritz, uh, I'm a full stack developer. This is yeah. Fabian, he's a full stack developer. Uh, well. We met uh, at university for computer science a couple of years back. And we actually started a company together called BitBetter uh, in Hamburg, Germany. And we do all kinds of software development. If you want to hire us, please feel free for Matrix or any other kind of work. Um, so back to the topic. Um, well, they're talking about calendars and matrix. There is an old uh, MSC, actually, that I just also talked to Matthew about it, that has been around for, I don't know, eight years or something. Um, and that kind of had a little different focus. I think the idea in that MSC was just uh, displaying events within a room and just saying, hey, community event happening, um, you know, uh, you're going to go or you're not going to go. Um, and it has been abandoned for eight years, so not much happened there. Um, our focus is a little bit different or a little bit bigger, I would say. Um, we want to solve, or well, not solve the problem, that would be kind of uh, ambitious, but um, we know that shared calendar sucks, as um, Jan says, and they suck because um, it's hard to do shared calendars between people on different kind of infrastructure. So if you're within your company and everybody's on the same Exchange server or you are all Google users or whatnot, then it's okay, you can do shared calendars, but it's kind of hard to do it um, across infrastructure boundaries. Um, and that sucks and we're federating everything, so why don't we federate calendars? I guess that's the question or the motivation we had. Um, yeah, Matrix could potentially solve this problem. Um, because it gives us uh, things like federation, encryption, uh, and user management. Um, and we already have matrix infrastructure out there in the wild, right? So why don't we use an existing matrix server to also host uh, calendars and not just messages between users? Yeah, so the first idea was, of course, in matrix, everything is a room. So basically we thought, okay, every calendar, <laughs> <laughs> uh, might be a room. And um, yeah, the mappings are pretty easy as well. As Moros already told, we can use the users from Matrix. And uh, yeah, the last thing we need is the event in calendar event. And that's match pretty good to message. So um, yeah, um, it was like a perfect solution for our problem. Um, the only thing that might be a little thing is um, that we don't want, like Moore says, to integrate the calendars into the chat uh, application. So we need maybe another room type or something to um, yeah, differentiate between uh, calendar rooms and um, message rooms. Um, so, yeah, after we had the idea, we uh, thought about what we have to do to make this like a competitive calendar application. And um, our goals were like, first of all, we need to uh, define a format for the, uh, um, yeah, for the uh, interaction with Matrix and we need in it to build an MVP um, with like an own client for the calendar for create uh, for creating calendars and sharing them and stuff like that and we need to build a Caldav bridge because everybody uses his own calendar application and everybody talks Caldav so yeah first uh, like 
invade into Caldev and take over after that if uh, like um, yeah the format gets bigger and bigger maybe some clients will implement our format but first of all we need to implement Caldev we change back um, yeah, also we didn't want, um, we just talked to Matthew, which was a little humbling because he also has a peer, uh, experience in calendaring. Of course he has. Um, and <laughs> we don't, we, we don't uh, like, so we, we are approaching this very naively. Um, and, but the thing that I, I guess is a good idea is we didn't want to reinvent the wheel. So we did not want to start defining our own calendar format. That would be probably a very bold thing to do. Um, so we just want to replace stuff that's already there like replace CalDAF with matrix for a synchronization and federation, and also replace um, iCal with uh, JS Calendar for sanity, basically. Um, so JS Calendar, for the people who have never heard about it, it's a very unfortunate name, I think, because it sounds like JavaScript Calendar. And if you Google it, you will find a ton of JavaScript libraries that are called like that. Um, but it's actually short for JSON Calendar, I think. And it's an ITF uh, proposal. Um, for a calendar format that's supposed to fix a lot of the stuff that makes iCal kind of not very nice. Um, it has been proposed by uh, the company Fastmail, and it's to be used as part of the JMAP standard, which is their kind of successor to IMAP. Um, so it has hopefully some commercial power behind it, um, and it actually looks pretty um, to be pretty cool and kind of fix the problems that iCal had in regards to uh, mostly time zones and recurring events. Um, I feel this is kind of the thing that they focused on. Um, so yeah, these are the two kind of technologies that we try to use for this, and maybe we just need to plug them together in a nice way, and hopefully that, that works. I don't know. We'll see about it. Um, anyway, yeah, so. Yeah. So oh, that's. No, that's mine as well. Oh, sorry. Oh. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> um, so if you've never looked at a JS calendar event, we can see it right here. So this m could be an example for um, a matrix event containing a calendar event. Um, it's abbreviated, so this is not complete. There will probably be more stuff in it. Um, and it's just a very light wrapper around JS calendar. So everything you see under the uh, content key is basically a raw JS calendar event. Uh, it's about as minimal as it can be, I guess. Um, well, it's kind of self-explanatory. Um, the standard is much more extensive. You can add all kinds of things and recurring stuff, whatever. But this could be the basic idea. We just wrap a JS calendar thing in a custom um, matrix message type. Um, um, yeah, then a calendar would consist of um, an amount of these events, uh, like a, a, a big set of these events. Um, and yeah, we thought about, so we had an idea about um, that we might only do, if we want to edit these events or do any kind of operations with them, uh, we might maybe only do uh, create and delete operations. But after talking to Matthew, it seems like a bad idea. So it's kind of a little, you know, already uh, iterated on that. Um, the second thing that we're trying to do, or that we probably need to do to sh so show that this is viable, is build like um, a little matrix calendar client, like an MVP. Um, and we might pick an existing matrix client boilerplate, maybe hydrogen or element, haven't really uh, decided on that, and put an existing calendar UI library on top of it. There's a very popular one called Full Calendar. This is also the one that you can see in applications like Nextcloud, etc. So I think it's pretty. Um, it's pretty extensive and it has all the capabilities that we need. And maybe we can plug them together and get like a little prototypey uh, calendar matrix client um, together. But um, obviously, this is not going to, you know, people don't want to change the application that they use. You can't bring everyone to use a specific application if they want to use this. So we need to be somewhat compatible to the existing world out there, um, which is. Um, oh, no, sorry, I skipped something. Uh, th so this is obviously building this kind of client um, is challenging um, because we get uh, a stream of events within a matrix room and we need to aggregate the stream of events into like a state that we can put into our UI um, and display it to the user. Um, this kind of aggregation logic is a little um, tricky, I guess, and there's multiple ways to do it. Um, we got some feedback from Matthew, thanks for that, but we're also interested in uh, any other feedback, I guess, Multiple people have done that before. It's not, we're not the first coming across this problem, transferring a stream of 
events into one consistent state that we can then plug into a user interface um, or something. This might lead to um, performance problems, maybe sometime, maybe we're also over-engineering it, maybe calendars just never get that big that it's a problem, but um, we should definitely think about how to do that efficiently um, so that it doesn't take, you know, too much time or doesn't waste your, um, your kind of memory on the server or whatever. So it should be performant, ideally. Um, and we also need to watch out for, oh, sorry, I forgot that. Um, we also need to watch out for conflicts. Um, you know, this is a synchronization problem. Basically, you might have two users editing the same event or even the same, just the event title, um, and you want to handle this in a good way, meaning, I don't know, nothing gets lost ideally, but potentially something must get lost and you know you need to think about what kind of logic you want to apply there um, and yeah it should be nice as well like if you want to, uh, to at least gain some traction it shouldn't look completely ugly and I mean we're not we can't compete with existing big calendar applications we're not going to reinvent Apple calendar or something but it should at least be you know something that uh, looks nice and is actually usable for a small uh, kind of MVP thing yeah um, we also spent uh, some thoughts about the bridging already. So, um, as we said, we need a bridge to Caldav um, to get the users who are using native uh, calendar applications. And the thing is we can use... Uh, oh, the reasons are we don't want to force people, of course, to use the tool. And um, yeah, later on, eventually, calendar apps will integrate metrics. But for now, I think we don't have a chance to force them to do. And um, yeah, that's uh, the reasons. Um, so yeah, um, we need to um, like deal with authentication. And we thought about that and uh, thought that the metrics ID might be a good username <laughs> for authentication, but it would be like a security problem to use the metrics credentials to log in because we don't know the application, like the native application someone uses, and um, we don't know uh, if um, everybody wants to host their own bridge or if there would be a general bridge. So, um, yeah, we thought that the bridge needs to um, create own passwords um, for the users who want to connect with Caldav. And uh, on the other side, on the matrix side, we um, think an app service would be overcomplicated. So we're just going by a bot user and just invite the bot user to the calendar room. Oh, sorry. And uh, yeah, so um, if you have like a room that uh, shall be uh, totally encrypted from end to end, you just don't invite uh, um, the um, Caldav bot. And uh, if you know the risk of like decrypting it to a bridge and send it over by Caldav, um, you just invite the bot. Um, yeah, back to you. Yeah, also coming back to the motto of the t-shirts, there's an MSC for that. Uh, we were asking ourselves, because there used to be an MSC, whether we actually uh, need that. And um, well, the whole aggregation logic, like the heavy lifting, uh, actually needs to, or probably needs to happen uh, on the client due to encryption. So I don't think there's much, or maybe there can be something in the future that's optimized. But for now, um, I think uh, we can do that on the client. So for now, there is no server changes ne necessary. Everything's client-side logic. Um, so I think from this standpoint, we can uh, basically get to building that. There's nothing we need to create for it. Maybe um, if we come down with a message format that, that everyone likes, that could be uh, moved into the standard sometime and could be used for other things as well, like the original MSC of just pitting these events into a room, into a regular like uh, message room or something. But for now, uh, I don't think there's anything that touches the standard right there, and we can basically uh, start this experiment, uh, experiment if we want to. So. Um, as we said, this is a proposal, or this is just an idea, a very rough idea. Um, and 
we are looking for funding to do this. Uh, we might apply to some of the known uh, funding sources for this, like we've done a matrix-related project with the prototype fund before. We might uh, apply there as well or see if we can find some other money sources um, and then maybe get this started, hopefully, if it works out. Uh, we might also do it in our free time, but this will probably have a different speed then or a different priority. Um, if you want to follow this thing or if you're interested in it or if you want to give us feedback, which is one of the reasons why we presented here, we would love your feedback. Um, as I said, this is very naive. If you've experienced with that, if you have criticism or you think this is a good idea, please uh, approach us directly or raise your hands or um, join our room uh, and give us uh, feedback there. Um, we would really love to have feedback because, as we said, this is the first time we're veering into the whole uh, calendaring space and there's probably people who know more about this than we all right yeah I thank you very much this is it thanks <laughs> anyone got feedback right away <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> Okay, um, I just wanted to say this is really, really, really cool and precisely what we were hoping somebody would do with calendaring over Matrix back in, I think, 2018 when Halfshot did the first old MSC and I kind of shot it down and said, no, you should do something like this. And he said, oh, okay, <laughs> and kind of backed off. So really, really cool to see it happening now. Um, from a funding perspective, this surely should be in the sweet spot for NLNet or Prototype Fund, or yeah. one of the NGI zeros. These style. are the two ones that we already uh, yeah. were thinking of, uh, but maybe somebody has any other ideas. So. Well, ideally, the Matrix Foundation would have lots <laughs> of big corporate donors who go and put money in, which we could then redistribute to worthy projects like this, but we're not quite yeah. there yet. I feel like this is also could be, I mean, if this is done right, this could be very uh, commercially interesting to some uh, companies who are already using Matrix. Uh, yep. So it could be a nice addition to their existing products or future products or whatever. Yeah, in fact, it might be worth talking to people like BWI, um, who are obviously investing a lot into the Matrix ecosystem, and I'm sure they would be interested in calendaring over Matrix. Um, in terms of the technical um, implementation, um, I, uh, thinking a bit more about it, um, if you used room state to index the beginning of the various events in the room, and you just go and download all of the room state um, atomically, it's obviously could be like a megabyte or possibly 10 megabytes of JSON or whatever, but frankly, that's peanuts relative to joining a room with 100,000 people in it because you're never going to have 100,000 calendaring events in a room. And then you can use aggregations um, to track the progression of the events as people accept, reject, edit the recurrences. And no, those strings can get big, like 50, 100 mm. um, events in a row, but you can use the aggregations API to navigate through them and aggregate them, plus they can be end-to-end -end encrypted in the timeline. So you said earlier in one of the slides that you don't want to aggregate server-side because it's encrypted. I would argue this is precisely what the aggregation API is meant to do, that you can have Megom encrypted human-facing contents, but the metadata of which event updates another event, which isn't particularly sensitive, <laughs> can still be exposed to the server so it can aggregate for you. So that's at least how I would do it of key value room state pointing to encrypted but aggregated events. Okay. So this is really, really cool and I wish it existed right now because <laughs> it would change the world. Yeah. We wish it, were, it was existing too so we didn't have to build it, but here we are. Yeah. <laughs> Hello. Uh, I have a question from the stream to you. Cool. And that is uh, from Carbon Budget. Uh, says, I would, uh, no, it would be great to have E2EE for it, end to end encryption. I miss it myself in calendar software. Is this feasible with your approach? Sorry, mangled English. Uh, is is, is, uh, is end to end encryption for this feasible? I, I think so, yeah. I mean, what uh, <laughs> Matthew just said. So, um, I mean, if we do everything on the client side anyway, yes, totally. Uh, but even it's supposedly it also works uh, if we do um, some kind of server side logic. So yes, I think it's totally doable. Uh, 
Hello. Thanks Hi. for the cool talk. I love this. Um, did you mentioned briefly that you didn't want calendars to show up in uh, chat clients. Um, could you elaborate on why not? And did you consider maybe doing something like extensible events to make those show up as in, in existing clients? Um, yeah, I, 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 think, I don't think that we don't want them to show up. But ideally, I think if you want to come close to an existing use case of how people use calendaring software, they typically don't want to intermingle their messages and their calendars. Just UI-wise, it's kind of confusing to have a sideline. And some of them are messages, and some of them are calendars. So you would have to separate them UI-wise somehow. And the easiest way is just to have a separate client for now. But it should totally be optional. Like, if somebody wants to do that, I mean, if, if everything works, then you can configure you know, the way you want to do it. I just think from an MVP standpoint, uh, you would want to imitate existing stuff as much as possible. So have a calendar software that only shows calendars and doesn't show messages. I, I can imagine a future in which uh, uh, I'd like to share an event. Oh, guys, this is happening next week. Yeah, mm, no, I agree. Yeah. This is like what the initial MSC supposedly was mostly talking about, and that should be possible. Yeah, once we have like the message format and you send it into a message room, then obviously the clients could handle it and I don't know, pin it somewhere or show it in the sidebar or whatever. Cool. Uh, another thing. Uh, you probably weren't aware, but we already have a matrix room for discussing specs for matrix calendaring. Mm -hmm. um, I'll link it in the, cool. in the room yeah, that you yeah. just mentioned. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Hi. Um, so one suggestion, or at least something to think about, is because, for example, with recurrent events, uh, you might not have, you won't have all the events in the room. So maybe go the Strixonity approach and have a, either an SDK or layer that feeds digested data for clients. Because otherwise, you'll have to do all the logic for presenting these things um, on whoever wants to show these things to users. So having something in between that does the stream aggregation calculation, showing things that aren't there. Just like, so like in proxy? <laughs> I don't know, maybe something that will do this instead of a client, because if you want to have then other clients that use the same specification or the same, um, okay, something to consider. Okay, yeah, thanks for yeah. the input. <laughs> um, some ideas which came into my mind was A, um, have you looked into Thunderbird? Because Thunderbird already has a great calendaring software. It has a matrix client, so um, and it has a cult of uh, infrastructure. So maybe binding it together is uh, worth a try. And it has a fucking huge data, uh, user base. Mm -hmm. So if you would do that, then the user would actually be where they are in their Thunderbird mm -hmm. client. Um, so that was one thing. Then the other one, have you looked into widgets? I, I'm not quite sure, but there were some calendaring or event uh -huh. widgets out there. Wasn't there one from... Huh? There is, of course, one from us, from Nordic. Um, but I'm thinking about already, not uh, had a question in mind, but it's a little bit of a different approach. We have a, we have a calendar bot. Uh, and a widget to create meetings. Um, the meeting that we create itself then is a room. So this is somehow mm. a little bit of a different use case. Mm. So um, not sure, but we, we should have a talk about our experience, of course, uh, especially like recurring meetings because we already struggled with these problems. Because if you dig into it, you, have, you realize that it's pretty much of front-end uh, business logic that you need to implement if you deal with that. And we have been surprised how complex it can get. <laughs> yeah, I can see that. But also, again, ad uh, just addressing the widget thing, I think this could, prob could probably be done with widgets. Um, again, I think it might be more complicated than it is if we do it without widgets. And you have the same problem of like separating functionality. You might not want to have uh, I mean, it, it could work as an MVP, but as like in something you want to use every day, you might not want to have it within a widget in a room. That's just, again, very much intermingled with messages, and some people like to have it separate. Um, but yeah, it could work as a, as a prototype or as a demo thing or as an option. It would be great to have it, yeah. Me again, sorry. Um, on the widget stuff, personally, 
I think that you can get best of both worlds. I think the bridge approach so that you can actually talk CalDAV from Apple Calendar or your iOS device or whatever it might be is great or point Thunderbird at that rather than having to figure out how on earth to link Thunderbird's calendaring natively into Matrix. But then this is such a good example of where widgets can go and uh, allow you to put your, your fancy calendaring library into any Matrix client and potentially also run standalone there's been a lot of talk, I think, yesterday about the idea of having a really lightweight widget host that just gives you enough of a matrix mm -hmm. client and hooks into OIDC, et cetera, to be a standalone app, as well as then working when you embed it inside Element or uh, Element X, which should get widgets very soon in order to support embedding Element Cool. And it's the same kind of thing. Rather than putting dedicated VoIP stuff into an app like Element, embed Element Cool. Likewise, rather than a calendar, go and embed this one. Um, too. Um, also, in terms of um, sharing information about an event versus actually having a calendar, you should be able to do both. Like one is the subset of the other, and we already have that today with iCal.ICS things that describe an event versus CalDAV being the entire lifetime of a calendar, and you should basically get it for free. One's a subset of the other. Yeah. And then finally, um, to Milton's point, if you use aggregations um, to basically chart the lifetime an event of an event, the way the CalDAV or something works is that somebody proposes, well, somebody creates an event, and then other people propose updates to it, which are effectively edits. It needs to get resolved somehow as you merge in people saying accept or they try to rechange the recurrences in an affirmation to. I mean, that's the actual calendaring server bit of it, which is the murky bit, which is not quite handled here. But if you still use plain old matrix edits all the way through, semantically, that's what's happening. Somebody posts a message, other people try to edit it, so you need to change it so you can, other people can edit it. And it kind of evolves over time, whether it's actual edits or a different type of relation. I know it could be basically, in fact, that's the way to do it, uh, a custom calendar mutation event or, mm. or aggregation. It's not literally an edit, but it's basically a thread of changes that happen to it. Mm. And then the most recent event at any time, whether that's generated by a bot or by the sort of people layering on top of it over time, you just, all you need as a user is to grab the most recent version of that event ID. So you can use Matrix to do the aggregating for you. So the thing that you pass into the UI is literally what is the most recent edit of this horrible chain of people arguing about the state of this calendaring event mm. over time. Yeah, we, we, we saw the same thing that the, this calendar brings kind of the same function or has a lot of the same problems that messages have. So it's kind of like mm. the problem inside of the problem. Um, so we're imitating a lot and maybe we try to use as much as Matrix has to offer um, as much as we can. Uh, that uh, Matrix solves with messages, we want to use as much as possible with events uh, there. So. But you, there is a problem, though, in terms of the end-to-end -end encryption and the role that a calendaring server would normally um, solve. So if somebody creates an event and they invite some humans into that room to respond to it, and one of them rejects it and the other proposes a new time for it, somebody needs to tie break and decide whether that proposal is valid, are they allowed to propose a new one, and basically have all that application logic, which would normally be done by the CalDAV server, which can see the data. Now here, the server wouldn't be able to see the actual um, details, because it's all end-to-end -end encrypted, so I think you might end up having to define a slightly different set of semantics, which the clients can solve a bit like state resolution, where you've got Byzantine fault-tolerant people or arguing about the same um, calendaring event and define the rules of how you merge it together in a consistent way. You might even want to use power levels in there in order to tie break to decide whether you know, the admin is allowed to cancel the event or not, and that sort of thing. Great, mm. so rebuild state resolution. That sounds like <laughs> yeah. a fun afternoon. <laughs> Um, so for me, there was just like one additional comment I wanted to add to the whole widget thing. So I think if you consider user adoption, this is also like the least friction path you could go. Because if you make people sign up with their main matrix account or even ask them to create a new matrix account to play around with your calendar situation, um, that's much more friction than if you just tell them, edit to room, play around with it, give us feedback on the UX. Mm. So yeah, true. I guess as a first step, that definitely makes sense. Yeah, ideally, as, as Matthew said, both would be possible, then that would be optimal. 
comments slash questions. So for the whole, both will be possible. There's also, I don't know if you've heard about the Matryoshka approach from the JS SDK. I've heard about it, yeah. So basically there's also low friction path for this, make it both poss possible way. Um, have you also, also thought about uh, coupling it with email? So like having a, a bridge like PostMogul, because this is, if it is not WebDAV, it's the normal way how ICS files were sent between the different domains. Mm -hmm. So if you have a PostMogul bridge and get the email directly into the matrix room, then you can pick it up from there and transform it into some kind of event in the format you want. Well, it seems that somehow, technically, the two things are just historically coupled, right? Emails and calendars, they, they go together. So maybe eventually you'll have to somehow add any kind of email functionality. But I feel this is way ahead. No, we need to get this working at all. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah. But I agree. It probably at some time you need to somehow connect these two. Okay. I think you answered all the questions. You received all the comments, so yeah. thank you. Thanks, everyone. Also, again, if you have anything else, put it in the channel. <laughs>